Hey, what's up everybody? Chris Outer, Slender Cat Outdoors, back with you again for another Video Viewer Friday. This is a continuation of the Sonar Tips, Tricks, How-To kind of series that I've been doing. Uh, today we're gonna break down and get into the, t uh, the 2D part of your sonar. I uh, kind of give you some ideas of what uh, scaled fish look like, hopefully, um, what catfish look like, uh, your settings, um, how they work, what they mean, and hopefully uh, kind of give you guys a better idea of what you're looking at on your 2D imaging. I think you're going to like it, so stick around. All right, so let's jump into the 2D section of our sonar unit. To start with, I want to express that, you know, some of these settings and the way that I have mine set up will, uh, you know, definitely be usable on your unit. Uh, some some people use Hummingbird, Lowrance, Garmin, and I'm just kind of giving examples of how I have mine set up to better help you understand uh, where to start uh, to set yours up. Uh, by no means am I saying this is the right way or the best way or the only way. Um, you know, this is a uh, this is how what has worked for me, you know, throughout the years, and you know, just a a good starting point, I guess you could say. Uh, for everybody, you know, that is getting, uh, just getting into using sonars, looking for catfish, uh, things of that nature. Um, but, so I want to start by just kind of going over the basics of how I have my settings. And, you know, just go through all the settings that I have mine on. And then we will hopefully be able to find some fish and show you guys the difference between a scaled fish, a catfish, or anything we find. Uh, we'll just talk about it as we go. So, so to start with, uh, auto range. Uh, this is like your water depth range, okay? I keep mine on auto. Uh, it will change itself uh, as I go deeper or shallower. Uh, right, you know, as you can see, it's on auto. It's set, you know, it's automatically setting itself for 30 feet. Uh, but now you can, you know, you can manually change it uh, to whatever depth that you, you know, you want to. Um, but like I said, I I just prefer to have it on auto. Uh, frequency. Um, this gives a lot of people a lot, I get a lot of questions about this. You know, whenever I started, I learned on 83. That's what I have confidence in. Uh, there is benefits to, you know, having it on high or medium chirp. Um, you know, you're gonna better be able to distinguish between bottom line and fish uh, you're going to get better returns um, from the arches and better be able to tell you know the quality of fish or size of fish uh, but me I prefer 83 uh, we get into our advanced settings um, I keep my noise rejection on low uh, surface clarity on high that's just going to be able to allow me let's turn that off for a second you'll be able to see what it does you can see everything kind of, that's the noise from the motor. Um, I don't want that on my screen. I want it as nice and clear as it possibly can. So I leave it on high and that kind of gets rid of all that, all that no, uh, surface issues from like the motor or maybe there's trash in the water, stuff like that. Uh, scroll speed, I keep mine on normal. Um, now that's something you can play around with define what you know really works best for you but you know for me normal and auto uh, settings from Lowrance really work great for me on a lot of things uh, ping speed I keep mine on 19 uh, some sonars will have it on auto some will have like a default setting um, you know 19 is what has I have found works best for me uh, turning it up or uh, down um, you know uh, a lot of times max you know I, I'm like one from max so basically I'm maxed out on the ping speed uh, I leave my manual mode off um, because I want everything to be you know the normal or auto settings uh, you can log your sonars uh, we might get into that in future videos let's see where was we at oh sensitivity um, you know, I keep mine on auto, which is default for the rants. Uh, that, you know, I feel like if I can, if I learn from, you know, auto, then no matter what, it's, I'm always going to be able to know 
or have a better confidence of what I'm looking at. Uh, collar line, I keep mine default for uh, Lowrance, which is 76%. Um, I don't know if you can see that default line in there. Uh, view. Now, this gets, uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. You can split your screens up for like a zoom side, a bottom lock, a flasher. Um, this is like an old school flasher style. Some of the ice fishing guys still use it. Um, you know, me, I prefer no split. Um, Lowrance has several different color palettes you can choose from. Um, here's like a green and yellow, a nice blue. Uh, green and, and red. Uh, me, I prefer color palette one. Uh, there are several different ones. You know that is strictly just a you know personal preference style thing. Uh, you know something that I would recommend with that is just learning. You know learning what those colors because, uh, for instance, with Lowrance, as you guys can see, let's get this back. As you guys can see this yellow. So. Uh, color palette one on the rants yellow is going to be your hardest return so yellow means hard but then you see the red now depending on how thick that yellow is if it's yellow all the way down uh, you know that's going to mean rock if where it's yellow and kind of goes into red that's going to be your mud your sand uh, things like that okay and you can see how the auto uh, depth range is changing as we go um, depth lines, I, I don't. I keep mine off. Um, I don't like them on, so I just keep them off. Um, and that's about it. You know, I, I keep. I don't want my fish IDs or my. Uh, you know, I don't want fish symbols popping up. I don't want beeps uh, whenever we go over a fish. Like I said in uh, the last video, you know, I want to keep as quiet as I possibly can when I'm looking at sonars. And let's see here. Oh, and you can stop sonar. Uh, and we may, <clears throat> we'll be using that, <clears throat> excuse me, as we go up through here. So I'm just gonna keep easing up through here and hopefully be able to find a good fish to uh, kind of show you guys what the difference is. I mean, this is a small one here. Uh, you can see he's right behind that little hump, tucked in there real nice and nice and good behind that current. Uh, water temperature's 57. 57.5 uh, you know I got my depth on there and you can add you can add whatever you want you know like I said in previous uh, videos that we saw about sonars just by going to your edit overlay and data overlay you can put whatever you want on there um, here's a good look at what night mode looks like on your 2d turns it black nice green bottom uh, kind of easy on the eyes it's not bright, you can still see everything good and clean at nighttime, and uh, it doesn't mess with your vision. I like that feature. Um, brightness, we can turn the brightness up and down, give you guys a look at that on this. And uh, like I've said in other videos too, everything from the system controls uh, panel is, is super easy with this touch screen. Oh. There we go. Okay. So let's uh, let's ease up through here and see if we can't find some fish. a small fish you can kind of see in <clears throat> that nice red collar in it and it's got just a spot of yellow you know to me that's a that's a small catfish now <clears throat> this here this is like a brush pile or uh, some sort of structure there okay now we got this long this long arch up here it's got a lot of yellow in it you know to me that having a lot of yellow 
uh, is you know some sort of scaled fish, carp, gar, uh, you know something like that. And we have to remember, you know, with a with just a regular 2D, you know, we're covering such a small um, small area. Uh, if I remember right, you know, for every three foot down, uh, you know, you're only covering a foot wide. Uh, so that gives you guys an idea of you know, just how much, you know, of how wide of a strip that we're actually covering. So these fish, like this one here, uh, these two, you know, those are nice, nice thick arches. Uh, they don't look like they was right in the cone, so they might have been right outside the cone. But to me, that, you know, nice thick arch, uh, you can see how this would be where he come into the cone, and as you... Uh, you know, he got centered over the cone, it got thicker, and then as we went past him, you know, it tailed off there. Uh, with that nice little, just a little spot of yellow, you know, to me that that indicates a, uh, that's a small fish, but to me that's still, a, you know, a blue cat or a catfish, you know, up off the bottom, a little bit, a little bit kind of suspended. Uh, here's some more structure of some sort, uh, rock or... Uh, well, where it's red, it's reddish to me, you know, that's kind of indicates wood. Um, you know, something like rock would come back real hard, kind of like this wood here. There we go. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there. Okay, you got you got structure of some sort, um, and you know, uh, for a lot of people that's been asking me if they can find fish and find structure uh, with a 2D sonar, you can. Um, you're not going to be able to define what it is. And I'm going to stop this right here. Um, you know, so we can talk about this for a second. Um, you're not going to be able to. You know distinguish really how big it is or you know what it is very easily uh, but you're still going to be able to distinguish that it's some sort of structure and that it's holding fish uh, for instance you know whatever this is and to me this would you know indicate some sort of wood structure or tree or uh, you know small brush pile or something like that but it's got two nice catfish right you know right behind it or right actually ahead of it. Uh, you know, we're coming this direction. Um, this would be the downriver side of it, and they would be ahead of it. So, you know, another instance, uh, something that I found in, in the past is when those fish are on the upriver side of like a brush pile or a tree or something, it's gonna be a good day. So, so that's what a, you know, a decent fish looks like. Um, you know, like I said, no monster, but a good, good fish nonetheless. Uh, with the nice red, thick, thick red um, arch, nice yellow in it. Uh, it's not overly yellow like a scaled fish would be. And if this was a scaled fish, it would have a lot of yellow, uh, real bright, solid. But uh, this is, you know, just a touch of yellow uh, with a nice thick red, uh, red arch. All right, so there you go. There's a look at the kind of 2D side of the sonar. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to take some of these, these tips and settings and give yourself a good starting platform uh, working with your unit yourself. Um, hopefully, it gives you a better idea of what those fish look like and what to be looking for uh, while out on the water. And hopefully, you learned something. Uh, leave it in the comments if you like this video, uh, You know what you learned from it. If you have any better uh, tips for other viewers that might have questions, make sure you're leaving those in the comments as well. And uh, next week, we're going to kind of go into the structure scan and the side imaging part of this. So hopefully we'll see you again next weekend for Video Viewer Friday. Have a good week, and thanks for watching.